Welcome to Hart County Public Library Outreach Virtual Storytime. We are so glad that you could join us. The Bunny Who Found Easter, written by Charlotte Zolato, illustrated by Helen Craig. One day a little bunny woke up from a long nap alone under a tall elm tree. He heard the silence of the woods around him and wanted other rabbits like himself for company. Can you tell me where I will find other rabbits? He asked a sleepy old owl in the elm tree. Other rabbits, said the owl. Why, there are always rabbits at Easter. Where is Easter? asked the little bunny eagerly. But the old owl had dozed off to sleep again in the bright sun. It must be some place to the east, thought the bunny, and he set off searching. It was a hot summer day. The leaves in the trees stood as still as a painting against the blue sky. The bunny found a pool of water, and down in the water silvery trout flashed by, but there were no bunnies about. Then this can't be Easter, he thought, and went on his way. He came to a field full of daisies. There was a hot summer daisy smell over the field, and the bunny's nose twinkled. A big, slow bumblebee hummed by. But in all that whiteness of daisies, there was no whiteness of bunnies like himself. This isn't Easter, the bunny said, and he went on. Once he was caught in a summer storm. The sky looked like night. Suddenly a streak of lightning, the color of the stars, forked through the sky. Great rumblings rolled from one end of the world to the other. The rain came down so fast that the bunny could hardly see the mountain laurel just ahead. Slowly the rumbling rolled by. Slowly the sky brightened. Slowly the rain stopped. He could see the mountain laurel with the wet shining leaves. Each flower cup filled with one sparkling drop of rain. But he couldn't see any other bunnies shaking the rain off their wet white fur. Not Easter, he said sadly, and hurried on his way. Summer was nearly over. The leaves on the forest trees began to turn, brown and gold and red. Dead leaves crackled under the soft rabbit hops of the little bunny who was looking for Easter. He stopped under a tree to rest and a round, shiny red apple fell down and startled him. It smelled of autumn and crispness. He took a bite with his two front sharp teeth. When he had crunched the apple to its seeds, he looked around and sighed. There wasn't another bunny to be seen. One day it began to snow. Soft white flakes drifted down from the sky, and the air was sharp and cold and still. When he hopped through the white drifts, he left little dark footprints in the snow. But no matter which way he hopped, his footprints never crossed other bunny footprints. The little bunny was alone in a world without rabbits. There were birds, little black sparrows like ink drops in the snow. Brown squirrels leaped about in the bare branches of the trees. Once he saw a whole family of deer slipping into the forest at dawn. But there wasn't another long-eared, pink-nosed, white furry rabbit like himself to be seen. This can't be Easter yet, he thought, and his loneliness grew inside of him. That night the bunny curled up in a hollow tree to keep himself warm out of the wind and sharp air. When he woke up the next morning there was something different. It smelled. He quivered his nose and smelled hard. It smelled of greenness and warm, soft sunlight. The little bunny felt sure he would come to Easter soon. 
In the forest, the black twigs had little tight curled green buds. The birds were singing high up in the trees as the bunny hopped ahead looking for Easter. Suddenly he saw something in the muddy earth that made him stand perfectly still with excitement. Crossing in front of him and going into the woods where he had never been were little rabbit paw prints on the ground. He followed the paw prints very carefully down a hidden path. There, in a clearing, he saw someone small and furry resting on a mossy bank. It was another bunny. She had brown fur. She had long ears like himself and eager bright eyes like himself. The little bunny was so happy to find her, he completely forgot about Easter. Hopping back through the forest with her, he showed her all the places he had seen on his search. At last they came to the tall elm tree where he had first awakened to find himself alone. But now his loneliness was gone. The two bunnies were very happy together. Soon they had a whole family of little rabbits, tiny, soft, sleepy things with long, sweet ears and small, wet noses. The bunny's heart throbbed with happiness at this wonderful, earth-smelling, sunlit, bunny-filled world. Aha! said the old owl when he saw the bunny's family. Didn't I tell you so? At Easter time, there are always rabbits. The bunny felt his little bunnies around him and the earth blooming beyond them and all things growing. And he understood at last that Easter was not a place after all, but a time when everything lovely begins once again.